Hey everybody, welcome back to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I am also your local technical consultant for Altium. And today we're gonna be continuing to talk about routing a power regulator or laying out a power regulator on one layer versus two layers. Now, previously when we talked about this, we looked at where to put components for a power regulator to ensure low noise and low parasitics. And we looked at two different options, doing it on one layer versus doing it on two layers. Well, today I'm actually gonna show an example in Altium Designer with a simple power regulator circuit. We're gonna identify the high DVDT and the high DIDT loops and nodes, and we're gonna look at those in the layout, and we're gonna actually look at some best practices to ensure that we get low noise and how to actually do a layout like this. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the type of power regulator that we might want to look at when we're thinking about routing on one layer versus two layers and putting components on one layer versus two layers is a small little module like this. Now, if you look at the top side, you can see a lot of different bulky components. Now, this is a regulator that might be operating at relatively high current or relatively high power. Um, I think this one outputs between like seven or 28, something like that. It can put out to decently high voltage. And then I think it can put out up to an amp. I, f I forget the specs on it, but I've had this for a little while and have haven't measured it. This little regulator, if you notice on the top layer, like it's got a heat sink, it's got a wire wound inductor, it's got some tall capacitor sitting on it. And so for this kind of thing, I think it makes sense to put it all on one layer because if you look at the back side, you see that the standoffs that are there are not gonna be tall enough to leave enough room for a lot of those components. And you don't have any choice but to put everything on one layer. Now. What if you had a different type of regulator where you didn't necessarily have these big tall capacitors, maybe you didn't have these big terminal blocks, maybe you were using some smaller SMD components in order to build up the regulator circuit. Could you put those on the back layer? So if you had big enough mechanical standoffs or you were putting it into an enclosure that left enough room underneath the board, you could definitely do that. Now that's not always common, but if you are going to do the uh, layout on two layers, we're gonna actually show an example that illustrates some best practices to ensure that you have low noise and that you don't get the unintended coupling to other circuits in your PCB. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here I have Altium Designer open and I've got a PCB layout shown here for a regulator circuit. Here I've got the schematic open as well and you can see it's not a terribly complex circuit. We're just stepping down from 12 volts down to five volts. We've got a couple input capacitors here. We've got our buck regulator component. This uh, regulator part number is right here in the comment. And then uh, you can see where the switching node is. So this switching node, SW out, this is gonna be our high DVDT location. So basically if I have some other conductor that I bring in nearby, the switching action on this node is going to, or it could, couple strong noise from the switching node over to that other conductor. So that's due to capacitive coupling. So capacitive coupling allows current to transfer between one node and another node due to a change in voltage or a DVDT. Then you can identify the high current loop here. So the high current loop just spans across the inductor L1 and then through these capacitors and then back to ground. Now you'll notice here, there's also a feedback line. So the feedback line comes off of L1 directly and then comes back into the VFB pin here on the regulator chip. Now this VFB pin on the regulator chip is actually a high impedance input. So you're not going to have current going along this portion of the, uh, of the schematic. So here, this VFB pin is a high impedance input. So that means there's not going to be a uh, current going across Cross R1 and then into the VFB pin. So the VFB pin does not uh, receive any current. It, it receives a small amount, but it's negligible. In fact, the uh, the high DIDT loop.
loop spans across the capacitors and it goes back through the GND net into the GND pin. So this here where I'm drawing out my mouse is basically the high DIDT loop. So we've identified where our noise sources are in this uh, regulator and you can see the SW out net, that's our DVDT, and then this loop here spanning across C3 and C4, that's our DIDT loop. So that's where you could strongly radiate noise. Now in choosing to do one layer versus two layer, one of the advantages is space saving and possibly noise reduction depending on how you do the layout. So what I've shown here in this example layout that I did uh, pretty quickly late at night just to kind of get an example here for this video, I have here the wire wound inductor is a shielded inductor and it's basically sitting in the middle of the board and then it goes directly to our output net. And so there's a big polygon here that gives us our five volt output. And so here the, uh, the DIDT loop spans through the inductor and then across C3 and C4 and then back into ground. And so you can see here, I've got some vias going back to L2 and L2 is my ground net. Now you could argue, and I think it's actually uh, a correct argument that it would actually be better to maybe take C3 and C4 and put them here closer to the 5V pin, so pin two on, uh, on L1. And so doing that would give you uh, basically a shorter route back over here to this via going back into the ground net. Um, another thing that you could probably do to improve this would be to put um, a few vias here to basically decrease the impedance uh, coming into the GND pin on the regulator chip. Now here you can see the feedback line and the feedback line or the way I've done this with the feedback line is I've tried to separate it from the switching output. Now this feedback line needs to have very precise measurement of this voltage coming off from the five volt net. Now the five volt net is supposed to be nominally a constant voltage. You should basically have as close to DC as possible. Now, obviously this being a switching regulator, there is going to be some switching noise. However, uh, if you look here along this net, you will uh, see that it does pass near the switching node in this PCB layout. So that's where you could potentially have some capacitive coupling between these two. And so separating it down here like this create some space between the switching node and the uh, the feedback line. So we would like that to be as quiet as possible. So that's essentially how we did this. And in doing this PCB layout, um, I tried to do it in such a way that everything is on one layer. And if we go here into the 3D view and I just kind of flip it over, obviously you can see everything's on one layer, nice and clean and easy. So now what I wanna do is look at what happens when we switch this over to a two layer layout. So what happens? What can we move onto the second layer? What kind of space saving does that give us? And does that give us any kind of improvement in noise? Now here, just taking C3 and C4 and then moving them over to the left, moving R1 and R2 to the right, I think that'll give you a little bit of noise improvement just because you are gonna make this current loop corresponding to the entire ring going around here where my mouse is. You're gonna make that a bit smaller. However, if you put this stuff on the bottom layer, you could get this even smaller. So let's take a look and see what that layout looks like. Okay, so now I have the new layout finished and you can kind of see what I've changed here. So on the top layer, if I just switch into single layer mode, we've got our regulator chip, we've got our inductor, and then um, we have this uh, capacitor here going back here into pin six. And that's pretty much everything that's on the top layer. We go to the bottom layer, we can see we've got our resistors and our capacitors on the bottom layer. And if I look in 3D, um, you can see that if I just kind of rotate to the back side, there's gonna be enough room to put some kind of mechanical standoff so that you could put this in some kind of enclosure. That's very nice and easy to, uh, to see in 3D and um, kind of illustrates the value of putting all the stuff or some of this stuff on the back layer. So the other thing you'll notice is the board size is smaller. So moving some stuff to the back layer, obviously I'm able to make the board size quite a bit smaller. So the other thing that this does is the, uh, the DIDT loop is also made quite a bit smaller. So previously it was along the surface layer and because it was along the surface layer, any emitted noise would be basically pointing up off the surface of the board. And that's just due to the magnetic field generated by that current. Now, if you look here, 
you'll see that it now spans through the board and goes along the bottom layer. So now that essentially changes the direction of the magnetic field that would be emitted by that current loop. So here in the bottom layer, if I just put this onto single layer mode, you can see that the current loop then spans down here through this, uh, this column of vias then comes through here through these capacitors and then just goes directly to ground and then back here to this point. So this regulator is going to have a lot lower uh, inductive noise coupling to other circuits as long as I don't take any data traces and route them along to the bottom half of this board. So the bottom half of this board, you'd like to keep any data traces away from this. Um, if you had to route traces in this area, you would actually prefer to either put everything on the top layer or you may want to throw some vias along here to try and shield any of that noise. And that can be kind of a difficult problem. Here, you'll also notice uh, we put the input capacitors on the back side as well. That just saves a lot of space. And then we've got this little power island here at 12 volts. And then we've got our input here. Uh, here's our other connection with ground right here. And then finally, the other benefit to doing this on two layers is you can see here, this is our feedback line. So net R1 sub one, that's our feedback line that is used to get this uh, measurement of the output. And then the regulator uses that to trigger a one shot timer so that it can then fire the MOSFET, which is then gonna initiate switching action. And that's what's going to give you a very precise five volt regulation on this output. This net here, it's on the back layer and it's actually totally shielded from the switching node up here on the top layer. So that's very beneficial. The reason that is so beneficial is because that switching node in the previous layout could actually strongly couple noise into that feedback line because they were on adjacent layers and they were unshielded from each other. So putting it on the bottom layer with two ground planes in between the two uh, layers with components and with that switching node, uh, that's going to really nicely shield this line. So that should illustrate the benefits of doing the layout this way. You're nicely shielding a line that has to provide a precision measurement back at that regulator chip. Don't be afraid to take advantage of this, but if you do, you wanna be careful which lines you route near this regulator circuit. So final point, we mentioned previously the magnetic coupling between the DIDT loop, which does exist here on the back layer, and any other uh, traces that you might route in on the bottom side. Same idea though applies on the top side. So I wouldn't want to route traces along this uh, bottom edge of this regulator circuit on the top side if I could help it because they could receive noise through magnetic coupling because here we've got the, uh, the DIDT node. Now this DIDT loop, it's much smaller, especially on the top layer because you can see we've got this row of vias here and these vias uh, being very close to this pad that reduces the size of this DIDT loop. However, it could still couple noise. Same thing over here. You'll notice the switching node, um, it really hasn't changed. Uh, that switching node could also strongly couple noise into any traces that are brought nearby this circuit. So you would want to avoid routing long parallel traces along this bottom edge of the board. Hopefully that shows you the alternative ways that you could lay out a voltage regulator, specifically a switching regulator that has a strong switching node and then a high DIDT loop. Keep that in mind the next time you need to lay out a switching regulator because kind of the, the guidelines that you'll see out there always tell you to put it all on one layer or to try and put all the components on one layer and then maybe do routing on one layer and two layers so that you can uh, create all the connections that you need while still using reasonably large polygons to try and dampen all that noise and support the current that you need. So that's all I got for you today on this one. Uh, we'll be doing some more examples like this with how to do layouts and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy those as well. Thanks everybody for watching and definitely don't forget to call your fabricator folks.